Hi, I'm Mike and this is my Ducati 250. It's a 1964 Mach 1. It's one of the original 25 Mach 1s made as homologated race bikes in 64. I got it as a box of bits, a crashed race bike in 1993. I had no idea what it was other than the fact it was a Ducati single at the point I bought it. Luckily, the chap in Reading helped me find a lot of the parts I needed and where the original parts aren't available recommended sort of what a decent alternative would be. Um, once I realised I could never get the bike back to standard because it had been so extensively crashed and modified during its racing life, uh, he recommended that I go to things like 12 volt electric so I could use electronic ignition. He recommended I use a modern carb rather than the 60 year old race carb it would have come with etc. So I now have a bike which is uh, a lovely thing. I really enjoy riding it. It's the first non-Japanese motorcycle I've ever owned and I wish I bought one, you know, and ridden one a lot earlier than I did in my life. If you enjoy our videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, click the notifications bell and give the video a like. We value every one of our subscribers and your support really does help us make more videos. This is a 250 narrow case Ducati. It's got a pretty much a race spec engine in. It's got a green and white race cam. It's got a high compression race piston. It's got the largest valves that are fitted into the 250 engine. And as I say, it's got a, a non-standard uh, modern Del Auto carburetor on there. So it all works nicely. Um, it's been set up beautifully by a guy called Brian Silver, who's an absolute expert in these things. So it'll tick over as well as do best part of 100 miles an hour, which isn't bad for a 250. The thing just makes you grin every time you ride it um, other than the few odd niggles that you get because it's the best part of a 60 year old bike um, it's just a lovely thing to ride some of the parts luckily have been remade by people around the world for instance the toolboxes which are always taken off and thrown away when these bikes were raced uh, are very very rare so a guy called Phil Hitchcock in Australia had a batch made um, most people throw away the mud guards as well anything that's tin so again, these aren't original Mac 1 mud guards because you, can't, you just can't buy them. When I bought the bike, it was fully kitted out as a race bike. So it had race fiberglass, body, tank, seat, uh, mud guards, etc. But the glass fiber was in a terrible state. And with modern ethanol based fuels, it's extremely difficult to make the, the fiberglass petrol tanks watertight, basically. So I found myself a, a Monza petrol tank it's a, a narrow case engine and even though it's a Mach 1 it's the same frame same sort of running gear as most of the other bikes the bits are fairly interchangeable but I wanted it to look like a Mach 1 at the end of the day so this has got a 150 mil headlight on it which is very rare all the others have 130 mil headlights I only found that last year and I've been looking since 93 for an original headlight. I managed to find one of the original 150 mile an hour Veglia Speedos for it that had been sitting in someone's garage for about 20 years. Unfortunately, when I fitted it, the odometer started running backwards after a bit. So I can't find anyone to restore it for me. So I've taken it off and just replaced it with an M&P cheapy Speedo at the moment. So some of these things are um, make your life difficult if you try to get some originality in here. I've bought myself a 100 mile an hour Veglia Speedo, so at least it'll have the right sort of clock in there. It's got the original sort of racing add-on rev counter. When I got it, the guy in the UK that used to sell these as race bikes used to fit Smith's chronometrics, uh, but I took that off because obviously BSAs and gold stars and all sorts of other things have those and they're valuable swaps so i think i swap that for the petrol tank it makes its presence felt it's not exactly a, a quiet subtle motorcycle um, and i'm a member of the ducati owners club down here they're a great bunch of guys to go out riding with and there's such a fantastic variety of machines few as old as this quite a lot of the bevel drive v-twins and and obviously even the new v4 panagales and things so you see a phenomenal collection of machines when you go out with those guys. Whilst it's a lovely bike to own, and you know it does sort of 80 miles to the gallon, obviously it's got a few negative points to its uh, uh, personality. It's 
not the sort of thing my neighbours enjoy me starting early in the morning. It's got a modern carburettor on it, so it at least ticks over and it's reasonably civilised through most of the rev range. If I'd kept the original SS1 race carb it came with, it basically doesn't run very well below about 5,000 revs, but this one does. Um, this has also got a modified Triumph electronic ignition on it, so it ticks over. Um, if you don't have those kind of things fitted, they kick back viciously when you try and start them, etc. And I've heard tales of people getting broken legs off these when the timing's slightly out. This one has been built by such an expert and been set up so well, it's pretty good. Usually starts first kick, uh, unless I've sat it around for a couple of weeks and not ridden it. It's obviously got uh, 1960s brakes, even though that was one of the upgrades that were done to this bike over the uh, previous model. So God knows what the uh, brakes were like on earlier Ducatis. So you just have to ride and leave a respectable distance between you and whatever's in front that's likely to stop. I've obviously upgraded it to 12 volt headlights so the actual you can hear the horn, it's got a halogen bulb in the headlight etc so you can see where you're going at night but being a Ducati they don't bother putting any instrument lights in for instance so you can't see what speed you're doing in at night, you've no idea what revs you're doing at night other than listening to it. The original seat for this thing was very very thin, um, sort of a one and a half length seat uh, they are incredibly uncomfortable, you know, they're, everyone says they just suede covered razor blades. So this has got a, a, a later seat on and again because the sub subframe's been cut and shortened in its racing life, this seat suits it better and it's actually reasonably comfortable for distances. Um, I think my only big concern is at the moment I've only had it for a couple of years and I've not done any long runs on it. Um, it's not amazingly comfortable for above 60 miles an hour um, and uh, sorry 60 miles and I'm not sure that you know I'm comfortable taking it much further than that even though I am an AA member. So this bike was originally built by Ducati to allow them to use certain race parts on their own works bikes. Those they had to build 25 production machines with the parts on for them to qualify to be used in the American F3 race series and so the original 25 Mac 1s were homologation specials built to homologate the race parts. So this bike can be sort of an interesting thing. It's designed to run at sort of 8,000 revs, which is a lot for a single. At those kind of revs, it vibrates quite a lot. So you have to lock wire everything on the bike. So I've had to teach myself how to lock wire. Luckily, because it had been raced, most of the parts already came with the holes drilled in them to allow me to do that. Um, it, it makes it a bit of a pig. The clutch is extremely heavy because this is sort of the most powerful variant of the narrow case engine. So it's got very strong clutch springs in. So if you get stuck in traffic, you end up with massive cramps in your forearm within about two minutes. Um, so it's not really a, a traffic bike. It's a, a nice open B roads on a sunny day type bike. The sort of things I like to do with this bike are uh, things like the Ace Calf Rockers run. Um, it's because it's 1960s, it's you know from the period when the, the rockers mods and rockers were around. Um, but whenever you take it anywhere, because it's so rare, people sort of always come up, what is it? You know, it's bright red and shiny, uh, whereas most British bikes of the period tended to be sort of black and gold. Um, a few people know what it is, but a lot of people sort of want to come up and ask. Uh, it draws attention to itself with the exhaust anyway, so you do meet a lot of old boys who are very keen to tell you about their bikes, etc. once they've seen this thing. So this sort of Ducati tends to stand out amongst even other classic bikes. So if you're interested in getting something like this, I'd, I'd thoroughly recommend it. I'd do some research so you know what you're getting yourself into, but enough of these bikes have raced these days that things like uh, handlebars and stuff that gets damaged in crashes is remanufactured. So there are a number of specialist suppliers around, so you can always get bits to get one of these on the road. Might not be the original bits, but you can get the bike up and running. Um, buy yourself some books. There's a number of good Ducati singles books around. Um, join the Ducati Owners Club. They're a fantastic resource for them, but buy it 
you won't regret it. You'll meet a great bunch of people. You'll have a bike you absolutely love to bits. And, uh, you know, I can just go in the garage and stare at the damn thing. I don't even have to ride it. I love it. <laughs> if you enjoy our videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, click the notifications bell and give the video a like. We value every one of our subscribers and your support really does help us make more videos. On the right hand side of the screen, you'll see more of our videos that we think you'll like. Thank you for supporting the Classic Motorcycle Channel.